So hi friends. Uh, in previous class, uh, we have started with uh, we have completed the construction uh, of uh, three phase induction motor. We have seen the uh, stator and uh, both the types of uh, rotors um, and the difference between square L case type of rotor and wound rotor or uh, slip ring type of uh, rotor okay and we have started with the principle of operation of uh, three phase induction motor so let us again uh, revise the working principle of three phase induction motor okay so three phase induction motor as its name suggests it works on the principle of electromagnetic induction okay so when a three phase supply is applied to a three phase stator winding may be a star connected fashion or may be in delta connected fashion then a rotating magnetic field of constant magnitude which is equal to 1.5 times phi m where phi m is the maximum uh, flux developed in the uh, phase okay and the speed of this rotating magnetic field is the synchronous speed that is ns rpm revolutions per minute and ns is given as 120 f by p where f is the frequency of supply and p are the number of poles okay uh, in both uh, stator and rotor so the rotating magnetic field rotates with a speed of ns or the synchronous speed now this uh, rotating magnetic field that is it um, it gives an effect of rotating poles around the rotor now you observe in this figure a this is the stator winding or the stator uh, circular fashion and this is the rotor these are the rotor conductors and this is the uh, north pole and towards south pole this rnf direction is shown rotating magnetic field direction is shown and this rotating magnetic field is rotating in say clockwise direction so as it is rotating in clockwise direction then this this rotor initially is at stationary position because at start no moment in rotor so rotor is stationary and this uh, stator magnetic field that is rotating magnetic field is rotating in clockwise direction with a synchronous speed now there is a relative difference between these two as rotor is stationary and the rotating magnetic field uh, flux or rotating magnetic field is rotating at speed ns so there is a relative motion uh, difference between this rnf and the rotor conductor now as per the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction whenever a conductor cuts the flux then emf gets induced so this emf is the rotor induced emf and it is due to the uh, faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so now rotor is rotating uh, sorry uh, this uh, rmf rotating magnetic field is rotating and rotor is stationary so this rotor conductor it is cutting this flux and that's why an emf will be developed on this uh, rotor conductor okay and uh, the magnitude of this emf that will depend on the relative motion difference between these two 
so that is the relative speed uh, between these two that is rotating magnetic field and the stationary rotor initially now as we have already discussed that these rotor conductors they are shorted at the end rings with the help of end rings they are braced or soldered or welded together to give the mechanical strength and as these conductors are shorted at this end then as emf is developed and the path is a closed path so current will flow in this conductors the direction of this current it is given by the lenz's law and that direction is exactly in the opposite to the very cause of it so that direction of current it is in the in that direction which opposes its very cause and what is the cause of this current the cause of current is the emf which is developed in this or uh, uh, induced in this particular uh, rotor so as this emf it is proportional to the relative motion between this rmf and the rotor so in turn the current is directly uh, depending on the direction of uh, the relative motion between these two rmf and the rotor okay so let us say the direction of this current uh, as this rmf is uh, in this um, clockwise direction its very cause will be the current direction which will be in the exactly it will be moving inside the page so uh, inside this particular paper which is shown so that's why i have marked it as, as a cross so induced current in the rotor conductor so this current direction it is moving inside this particular paper so now as you know whenever a current carrying conductor is there then it produces its rotor uh, its own flux and the direction of this flux is given by the right hand thumb rule now the direction of current through this uh, rotor conductor is inside this so the thumb of right hand it indicates the direction of this current so as it is moving inside this paper so the remaining fingers they will indicate the direction of the flux so it shows that as the current is entering in the paper the direction of flux is clockwise so this induced flux will be having the direction clockwise and as i have told you this direction of this current is in the uh, in that direction which opposes the very cause of it that means the flux which is developed around this conductor it is in the same direction as that of the stator uh, stator um, magnetic field rotating magnetic field so stator rotating magnetic field is in the clockwise direction so the flux developed in this rotor conductor also it will be in the clockwise direction now these two magnetic fields will interact with each other now as uh, how is the interaction you see the direction for this particular uh, on the left hand side of this uh, rotor part it is in the same direction moving upward both the fluxes are moving upward so there will be definitely addition of fluxes taking place and towards this area whereas you observe the opposite part here on the right hand side here the direction of this flux due to induced rotor current it is in downward direction whereas the um, flux rmf uh, rmf flux is in upward direction so there will be cancellation of flux taking place on this right part so here you can observe there is a addition of fluxes 
which is resulting at this particular side and here there is a weakening or cancellation of fluxes which is taking place so that is um, this is same as that of a stretch rubber band which is forcing this particular rotor conductor from the addition or high flux area to this low flux area that means a mechanical force will be exerted by this rotor in this particular direction that is the clockwise direction and such n number of rotors are there so such n number of rotor conductors are there so all these rotor conductors will experience a force in the particular direction and hence the entire rotor will experience a torque in this clockwise direction and thus this rotor starts rotating in clockwise direction so this is the uh, principle of operation of three phase induction motor now as the rotating magnetic field is rotating in clockwise direction the rotor has start also started rotating in the clockwise direction and why this has happened because it has um, um, the direction of this current which is in the um, uh, in a particular direction which opposes its very cause and its very cause is the relative motion between these two and as this relative motion difference it wants to reduce that particular motion that's why it has started rotating in the same clockwise direction so that now onwards there will be a less difference of this um, particular uh, uh, there will be a less relative motion and difference will be there between stator rotating magnetic field and the rotor as both are rotating in the clockwise direction okay so this is for uh, rotor rotating in clockwise direction now as i have already told you if you are interchanging any two phases then the rotating magnetic field direction it reverses so let us say we have changed any two phases or phase sequence instead of r y b we have changed interchange the two phases so that this rmf rotating magnetic field it has uh, it has started moving in opposite direction say it is it will move in anti clockwise direction as earlier it was mo moving in clockwise direction so now it is moving in anti clockwise direction now as this rmf is rotating in anti clockwise direction and this rotor is initially at stationary position there will be difference between relative motion difference between these two one rotor and another is rotating magnetic field so due to this rotor uh, uh, difference in the um, uh, relative motion the emf will be developed on this rotor conductor so as uh, and the magnitude of this emf will be proportional to the relative motion between these two okay and this emf in turn will cause a current to flow in the rotor as these rotor conductors are shorted by the end rings now the direction of this current which is given by the lenz's law it will be exactly opposite to that of the previous one so in previous case when the uh, rotating magnetic field rmf was in clockwise direction this current was moving inside this paper now as the rmf direction is in the opposite anti clockwise direction this current will come out of this paper that means this will be shown by a dot instead of a cross you have to show it by a dot now as per our uh, right hand thumb rule if the right hand thumb indicates the direction of the current now the direction of current is moving outwards from the paper so the remaining fingers they are showing the direction of flux induced due to the rotor current now that direction of flux induced is exactly opposite in previous case 
that is it will move in the anti clockwise direction instead of clockwise direction now it will move in anti clockwise direction that is in the same direction as that of the rnf that means this uh, very cause of it it wants to reduce that means the rotor will again will move in the anti clockwise direction so that's why this flux now it is in exactly opposite direction now the interaction of these fluxes if you will see now here it will be the cancellation of two fluxes will take place and here it will be addition of two fluxes will take place so that the mechanical force exerted on this rotor will be exactly in opposite direction that is anti clockwise direction and as there are n number of rotor conductors are there they and all these rotor conductors will experience the mechanical force in anti clockwise direction so that the entire rotor will experience a torque in anti clockwise direction and thus the rotor will start rotating in anti clockwise direction so this is the working principle of uh, three phase induction motor now the actual speed of this rotor it is n whereas the speed of this rnf rotating magnetic field that is ns so ns is the speed of rotating magnetic field in rpm whereas n is the speed of the rotor that is the motor which is rotating so its speed is n and the difference between ns and m so ns minus m it is the relative speed between the two that is the rotating magnetic field and the rotor so thus the rotor always rotates in the same direction as that of the rnf okay so this is the working principle now one thing can n be equal to ns that means whether this particular rotor of induction motor three phase induction motor whether it runs with the synchronous speed that is as that of the rnf so the answer is definitely no because whenever this n or the actual speed of rotor will become equal to ns then the relative motion between these two will be zero so the magnitude of emf which is developed on the rotor that will be zero so there won't be any current flowing through it so there won't be any flux induced due to rotor current and as there is no flux due to rotor current there is only one rmf which is rotating and the rotor will not experience any force so that means the entire principle of induction motor will collapse that's why n never be equal to ns so practically also this is not possible n equal to ns is not possible because this rotor will have its own inertia and due to this inertia this in practice rotor never achieve the speed of rmf that is rotor never runs at the synchronous speed and that's why this motor is also referred as a synchronous motor that means the speed of three phase induction motor it is n it is always less than ns it never becomes equal to ns because as whenever it will become equal to ns the entire principle of induction motor which is the which is work on the principle of faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so that induction is due to the relative motion difference between these two whenever these two speed will become equal there won't be any relative motion that means the relative motion between these two will become equal to zero and that's why the entire principle will collapse and that's why the uh, induction motor 
is always running at speed n which is always less than equal to uh, less than ms that is the synchronous speed and we know that synchronous speed is given by 120 f by p where f is the supply frequency 120 is constant and p are the number of poles for which we have rounded the stator winding and the same number of uh, poles will be developed in this rotor which is of um, uh, squirrel cage type of rotor and for wound rotor or slip ring type of motor we have to wound the winding of rotor also for same number of poles okay so um this is all about the working principle now what is slip and the actual speed so we know that ns minus n is the slip speed and it is generally expressed as the percentage of the synchronous speed so uh, slip of the induction motor it is defined as slip is equal to ns minus m that is the slip speed divided by the synchronous speed that is ns minus m upon ns is the slip which is uh, the difference between this rotating magnetic field and this rotor okay so um, this is the slip speed ns minus m that is the difference between these two and if we are taking ratio with this uh, speed of rmf uh, rmf then it is the slip and usually this slip is expressed in the form of percentage so multiplied by 100 so ns minus n upon n into 100 is the percentage slip now if you will rearrange this terms you will find that this ns if you will take on this side so s ns so n will be equal to n you take on this side so m is equal to ns minus s into ms so you take ns common so that m will be equal to ns into bracket 1 minus s so where n is the actual speed of the motor means the rotor which is rotating with the speed of m and this ns is the synchronous speed now uh, this n equal to ns into 1 minus s now from this we know that at start motor is at rest so whenever motor is at rest this n is equal to 0 so as n is equal to 0 that means if you put this value 0 here this will go it will become zero so s will become equal to 1 so that means at start s is equal to 1 so what is the maximum value of slip maximum value of slip is possible at start whenever induction motor is at running at zero speed and that value is equal to 1 why s equal to 0 gives the n is equal to ns so whenever s will be 0 then m will become equal to ns so which is not possible for induction motor so slip of induction motor cannot be 0 under any circumstances so whenever the motor is under running condition then this slip initially at start it was equal to 1 and uh, under running condition the slip of this motor will become s equal to 0.01 to 0.05 that is 1 to 5% 1% to 5% is the range of the slip for uh, whenever the motor is under running condition okay so this is all about the working principle and slip now let us see the effect of slip on various parameters now this slip 
how it affects the rotor frequency now we know that in case of induction motor three phase induction motor the speed of rotating magnetic field is ns equal to 120 f by p where 120 is a constant f is the frequency of supply in hertz and p are the number of poles for which we have wound the stator as well as the rotor has adjusted its poles if it is a um, uh, spiral cage type of rotor and if it is wound rotor or slip ring type of rotor then you have to wind it for the same number of poles as that of the stator okay now at start when n is equal to 0 we know that slip is 1 and stationary rotor has maximum relative motion with respect to the rmf that is rotating magnetic field hence maximum emf gets induced in the rotor at start the frequency of this induced rotor emf at start is same as that of the supply frequency okay so as the motor actually rotates with the speed n the relative speed of motor with respect to rmf decreases and it becomes equal to the slip speed that is ns minus n right now the induced emf in the rotor it depends on the rate of cutting flux that is the relative speed ns minus m hence under running condition the frequency of induced emf it decreases now the rotor is wound for the same number of poles as that of the stator that is p so p is um, constant in both the cases if fr is the frequency of the rotor induced emf under running condition at slip speed ns minus n then there exists a fixed relation between ns minus n and fr with p similar to this equation as ns equal to 120 f by p which is this equation ns equal to 120 f by p which is at start so under running condition instead of ns the speed is ns minus n and instead of f the rotating uh, rotor um, frequency um, it is the f r okay now um, dividing these two equations so ns minus n equal to 120 fr by p this is the relation same as that of this now you take ratio of these two if you will take ratio of these two ns minus n divided by ns equal to 120 fr by p divided by 120 f by p so that is this relation ns minus n divided by ns equal to 120 fr by p divided by 120 f by p 120 120 gets cancel pp gets cancel so here it will remain only fr by f and now you know ns minus n upon ns it is nothing but the slip that is s so s is equal to fr by f therefore fr is equal to s into f so that is the frequency of rotor induced emf and the rotor current in the running condition fr is slip times the supply frequency f right so i hope you have understood this now if at start we know that s is equal to 1 so whenever you will keep here s is equal to 1 that fr will become equal to f that is the rotor frequency is same as that of supply frequency at start okay and as the slip of the induction motor is in the range of 
one percent to five percent under running condition. That is point not one to point not five. The rotor frequency is very very small under running condition because this S value is either point not one to point not five into the supply frequency that is fifty hertz. So F R will have a very small value under the running condition. Okay. So I hope uh, time is uh, you have understood till this. and uh, i think uh, time is uh, running out so we'll stop here uh, today i'll revise the things in 2 3 minutes and then we'll uh, stop uh, so we have seen the working principle of three phase induction motor so three phase induction motor um, it works on the principle of um uh, parallel law of electromagnetic induction and uh, whenever we are applying three phase supply to uh, stator winding then it produces a rotating magnetic field the direction of that depends on the phase sequence of the uh, stator um, whatever supply phase sequence you have kept so it may be a clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction now this rotating magnetic field uh, and the rotor is stationary initially this rotating magnetic field is rotating at speed ns whereas this rotor conductors are stationary at start so there is a relative motion between these two and due to this uh, due to the faraday law of electromagnetic induction emf will be induced in the uh, rotor conductor and as the rotor conductors they are shorted at the shorted with the help of end rings they will provide the short path to carry the current the direction of this current it is given by the lenz's law and that direction is exactly in the uh, direction of where which will um, oppose the very cause of it and very cause of it is the relative motion between these two so the direction of current is in such a way that the relative motion between these two will start reducing and that will reduce just at the end you will come to know how it reduces because this direction of current will decide the direction of flux induced due to this rotor current which is given by the right hand thumb rule and this flux is in the same direction as that of the direction of rotation of this rmf so if this is rotating in clockwise direction this flux will also be in clockwise direction if rmf is in anti clockwise direction this flux is also in anti clockwise direction now uh, at one side there will be addition of these two fluxes and on another side there will be subtraction of these two fluxes will take place so that is the interaction of these two fluxes will result addition of fluxes that is high flux area on one side whereas the low flux area or cancellation of two fluxes in the opposite direction so that it will result uh, to a mechanical force from the high flux area to low flux area and such n number of conductors are there in the rotor so the rotor will experience a torque in the same direction as that of the rmf whether it is clockwise or anti clockwise and the direction of this uh, rmf depends on the phase sequence so this is the principle of operation of this uh, induction motor and m is the actual speed of this rotor rotor never runs at synchronous speed because this uh, rmf is running at synchronous speed and rotor and synchronous speed if the the, the, the difference is uh, this rotor is rotating at n and this is uh, rmf is rotating at ns if these two will become equal then the very principle of it that is the induction principle electromagnetic induction it takes place the emf will be induced in the rotor only and only if 
there is a difference between these two relative motion difference between rmf and the rotor that's why m never becomes equal to ns and practically also it is possible because this rotor will have its own inertia and due to the inertia this uh, rotor never uh, rotates with the uh, synchronous speed but it rotates with a speed which is slightly less than the synchronous speed of the rotating magnetic field in the steady state okay so that's why induction motor never rotates at synchronous speed and hence it is also referred as the asynchronous motor that means n is always less than ns okay now ns minus n is the slip speed now the slip is given by it is the ratio of slip speed divided by the synchronous speed and usually this slip is uh, expressed in the form of percentage so multiply by 100 so that is the percentage slip now from this relation we can rearrange these terms so that m will be equal to ns into 1 minus s so at start s equal to 1 because at start n is 0 so as n is zero this s will become equal to 1 so this is at the start and uh, under running condition this uh, uh, the, this is the maximum value at start this slip value is the maximum and what will be the minimum possible uh, uh, value of slip if you will substitute s equal to 0 then this n will become equal to ns which is not possible that means n value uh, sorry s value will never go to zero but practically under running condition it is equal to 1% to 5% of the uh, maximum value okay so that is 0.01 to 0.05 is the value of slip and now next is the uh, effect of uh, slip on the Uh, rotor frequency so speed of rmf it is ns equal to 120 f by p this is uh, rotating magnetic field now the induced emf in rotor that depends on the rate of cutting flux that is the relative speed so ns minus n so ns minus n is equal to 120 fr by p where fr is the uh, frequency of the emf or the current induced under running condition so now take the ratio of these two so that you will get ns minus n upon ns it is equal to fr upon f and this is nothing but the slip so s is equal to fr upon f so fr is equal to s into f thus the frequency of rotor induced emf and the rotor current under running condition that is fr is slip times the supply frequency f and at start s is equal to 1 so fr will become equal to f and under running condition the value of s it is equal to 0.01 to 0.05 that means this fr value under running condition will be very very small okay so i hope we'll stop here today thank you i hope you have understood everything if you have got any difficulty you can uh, call me thank you bye bye good day take care